The fact that the plasma membrane is able to move, uh, right, it is a fluid mosaic, the fact that things can move and slide around allows some special things to take place. This is what allows, in some cells, phagocytosis. What this word means, phagocytosis, is cell eating. This is referring to how some cells can take in substances from the outside. Um, so bulk transport, this is one way that bulk transport can happen. And a good example of this is some of the cells of our immune system, like macrophages, what they do is they go around in the body and they just kind of keep an eye out for bacteria or dead cells or other things that are not supposed to be there. And what they do when they find things like that is they, um, they take it inside and they digest it. So phagocytosis, what's happening here is amoeboid movement. So remember amoebas back from general biology? Amoebas move in a very special way. They form the is pseudopodia, false feet. And what we're looking at in the picture here, um, back over here is the cell body, and these are pseudopodia that are sort of reaching out to the right, and they're wrapping around, um, I think these are bacteria that are being shown right here. So the bacteria are being engulfed. And um, the pseudopodia, this is something that only some cells can form. Not all cells can do this, but again, some of the cells of the immune system, we'll be coming back to this in a later chapter, some of the cells of the immune system are really good at performing phagocytosis. Another way that cells can take things internal uh, is by endocytosis. This is another way that large molecules, uh, materials can be brought into the cell, but it's a little bit different style. Instead of using pseudopodia, instead what happens is the plasma membrane sort of bends inwards. Let's take a look at this cell picture right here. So right here is the cell membrane, the plasma membrane. Um, out here is the external environment, and here is the inside of the cell. Okay, so let's focus in on this plasma membrane. And what can happen is if there's a food molecule or something that the cell is interested in, um, what can happen is if that food molecule binds to a receptor on the cell surface, that can initiate a vesicle to start forming. So see how the plasma membrane right here is bulging inwards? Okay, that's something that would be triggered by a, a binding at the cell surface. And what's gonna happen is this will keep sort of bulging inwards and eventually the membrane right here will Will fuse and so what's going to happen is a vesicle will pinch off inside and we end up with something like this. Again this is called endocytosis. Um, it, it results in a, a vesicle being formed. There are two types, um, pinocytosis and receptor mediated. I was describing receptor mediated endocytosis. This is a very specific way that cells can bring things in. Pinocytosis, this is something that it's kind of just happening all the time in order to sample what's outside. Um, think of think of sort of like ocean waves. They're sort of like little ripples that form just all the time on the plasma membrane, and they bring in little bits of the extracellular environment. Uh, that's pinocytosis. Receptor-mediated endocytosis is more what we'll be focused on in this class. And, oh, by the way, forgot to say, there are a lot of viruses that gain entry to cells by this mechanism. So it could be that a virus comes along, binds to a receptor, and as far as the cell knows, it looks like a food molecule. So the cell brings it inside, and then the virus suddenly has access to the inside of the cell. So there are a number of viruses that um, gain entry to cells that way. Just the opposite of endocytosis, would be exocytosis. This is how cells can ship things out of the cell. Okay, so generally, it starts with a vesicle that forms at the Golgi. So the Golgi packages something up into a vesicle, and then that vesicle moves outwards along the cytoskeleton, and it can sort of walk over to the plasma membrane and fuse with it. So that would result in the contents of the cell being spilled outwards. So it's kind of moving in just the opposite direction. The plasma membrane 
can also have some special structures. We're going to mention three special structures right here. Cilia, we will be encountering cilia in this class. Cilia are very tiny sort of hair-like structures and these are not present on all cells, they're just on certain cells. They are made of microtubules and a good example of this is the cells that line the respiratory, the, the airways. Um, they have cilia and what those cilia do is they wave back and forth and they help to move um, dust or things that you might breathe in, um, helps to move stuff like that back upwards so that it doesn't just sort of build up in the lungs. And so cilia help to move things back upwards until you can either cough it out or swallow it down into the digestive tract, um, helps to keep the airways clean. Okay, so microtubules are what allow cilia to move. And I'd like to have you look at this picture right here for just a moment. Uh, what this is showing is a cross section through some cilia. So we're looking at a, a cross section. It's like someone cut a tree, uh, cut a tree down and we're looking at the stump that's left over. Okay, so inside of the cilia, what we have are these arrangements of microtubules. This is called a nine plus two arrangement. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pairs around the outside. And then there are two in the middle. Okay, so this is called a nine plus two arrangement. And this arrangement allows the cilia to be able to bend. It's like these um, microtubules right in the middle. They can sort of grip on with the microtubules surrounding them. And they can, it's almost like they can ratchet against each other. They can slide back and forth, uh, which causes the cilia as a whole to bend left or right. It allows them to bend back and forth. There are some cilia that do not have the, the two microtubules in the middle and they are non motile they do not move. And we're not entirely sure what their function is. So that's something that's still being studied. It's thought that maybe it has some sort of a sensory function, but not really sure about that. Okay, so mostly I'd like for you to know about the cilia that can move. <clears throat> Flagella are a related um, structure that can sometimes be present on cell surfaces. Flagella are also made of microtubules. They also have a 9 plus 2 arrangement, uh, but they tend to be quite a bit longer than cilia. And flagella are actually for allowing cells to move. Okay, so cilia cause the, the surroundings to move, uh, but flagella actually allow cells to move. And the only example of this in humans is in the case of sperm. Sperm have a flagella which allows the sperm to move. Finally, the last special structure we're going to mention is microvilli. These are present in cells of the digestive tract. They are also present in cells of kidney tubules, so we will be seeing uh, microvilli when we get to each of these systems in more detail later on. Um, over here is a picture of microvilli, all of these folds. What these are doing is increasing the surface area of the cell. So this is making the plasma membrane, instead of just being a flat plasma membrane, it's all folded. And this helps to give a lot of um, interface area between the cell and its environment. So that's great for allowing diffusion. It's also great for allowing chemical reactions if those reactions depend on enzymes that are embedded in the plasma membrane.